Not exactly sure how to start this video, but in the title are the words shoot, move, and communicate, which are three really important skills. Any one of these skills is very helpful on its own, but when you combine them together, you get capability that is more than the sum of its parts. Now here at T-Rex, we've talked about communication uh, one time, and we've talked about shooting a few times. We haven't really talked about moving though. We've talked about moving while shooting, which is important, but I wanna talk a little bit more about the larger situational awareness, being able to figure out larger moves, being able to figure out where you are, which in Tennessee is a little bit tricky because all of Middle Tennessee looks exactly like this. Um, being able to figure out where you need to be to accomplish your goals, and then how you're actually going to move from where you are to where you need to be. Which again, in Tennessee is a little tricky because most of it looks like this. Now, John Lovell has an excellent video on beginning land nav that you should go and watch. Their shoot, move, communicate, and move and communicate are by far more important. If you're in the right place at the right time, you can maneuver into position. Now in John's video, he talks about some of the tools that you can use to do the move part. Ideally you have at the very basic, a compass and a map, and uh, you're also gonna need grid squares, lots of grid squares. Um, but if you have the map and the compass, you can figure out where you are and where you wanna move. And if you have a radio, then you can coordinate with other guys that have maps and compasses. And for the last 100 years or so, that is the way that small units have been able to coordinate what they are trying to do, and it still works. But there are some new tools that can help with the move and communicate part. And the one that is most commonly used in the United States military is something called ATAC. And that's what we're gonna be talking about in this video. The first half of the video is talking about ATAC itself. And then in the second half of the video, we're gonna be talking about alternatives. So ATAC stands for Android Tactical Assault Kit. There's also a WinTAC that runs in Windows. Uh, legend tells of an iTAC, which I think was removed from the App Store because uh, I th probably the Chinese government complained to Tim Apple. I bet it was something like that. And even among the Android versions, there are several variants. There's one for the United States military, one for militaries that we sort of trust, one for militaries we don't trust, one for civilian uh, firefighter, law enforcement, things like that. And then just recently, we got a publicly released version uh, for people like you and me, which kind of happened uh, against the government's will, but that's a long story. Now, of course, when uh, the civilian uh, market uses ATAC, the acronym magically changes. It's no longer the Android Tactical Assault Kit. It magically becomes the Android Team Awareness Kit because civilians are not allowed assault rifles or assault software. Uh, but what ATAC does is extremely cool. At its heart, it is a powerful mapping tool. Uh, you can load all kinds of GIS data, satellite maps, elevation maps, all kinds of mapping data into one place and view them in 3D space. And then you can overlay other images, whether they have GIS data in them or not, or even 3D models. And then you can add map markers and navigable routes and sensor data on top of all of that terrain. It is extremely cool. But the other part is the communication framework. Inside of ATAC, you can see other ATAC users that are on the same net. You can see their positions on the map, but you can also share markers and routes with them, and you can control all of your radio traffic with them and with other people from inside of the app. So all the tools for small unit tactical stuff, or if you're a civilian, small unit team awareness stuff, uh, is all inside of the app and you can do it all in one place. And on the military side, they added the ability to send targeting data to mortar guys and artillery teams and close air support. And then because the system was working so well and it was so fast and cheap to develop, they kind of added everything to it. So some of this is built into ATAC. Some of this is supported with plugins, which we'll talk about later. There are tools for tracking moving targets. There are tools for indirect firing solutions. There are tools for airborne operations. Uh, there's the ability to plug into more and more pieces of the military infrastructure and talk to more and more different military uh, units and control more and more of the military uh, infrastructure. So there's the ability to see satellite feeds and security camera feeds and drone camera feeds. Uh, and now you can actually fly drones and adjust drone waypoints from inside of here, or even drive bomb disposal robots uh, from inside of this one app. ATAC started out being a very powerful solution to a pretty small set of problems and it is now the solution to 
a ton of different things. It feels a little bit like the F-35 project, which started out being one aircraft doing multiple jobs, but now the number of jobs that it has to do has made the program uh, kind of big and unwieldy. Um, but ultimately, everything that ATAC does can be divided into the move and communicate categories. On the move side, it is a powerhouse and it has everything that I need for mapping. It has offline maps, it has online maps, it has elevation charting, it has road routing and the ability to import basically every file type that I've ever heard of. I can draw shapes and markers and I can export those in a bunch of file types and import those into other things. And it also lets me combine a lot of different maps and files and export that as a complete package uh, which then I could transport to other people's phones on a micro SD card. The only other way for me to share ATAC data with users is to run an ATAC server which is so difficult and complicated that people are already building a free version of the server which is in super early alpha mode and there's kind of a way where you can set up a VPN and everybody inside of the VPN can chat and see each other's positions but that all requires the internet, and I really want offline comms. Now on the communication side, ATAC is built to do offline comms very well, but kind of only if it's already plugged into a military infrastructure. So for example, the only native radio connection that I can select in here is the Harris PRC-152, which is an $8,000 radio, and I don't have one. Now on eBay, there are replicas of this radio, but uh, spoiler alert, they don't work. In the communication video on radio that I did, whenever that was, I talked about how the military solution may not be the best solution for you. And so don't buy into that system if you cannot support the entire infrastructure. You need to come up with a radio solution that's going to fit the actual infrastructure that you have access to. This CASIVAC point allows me to select a ton of different things, like the equipment that is required, the type of patient that we have and how they have to be moved, uh, whether or not they're enemy combatants or children, or um, apparently there's no option for child soldier. Um, but all of these things that uh, I'm communicating to the people that are responding assumes that I'm using a military radio to communicate military information to medical guys that are part of a military system. It's far less useful for me as a civilian. Now, the good news is that ATAC is rapidly becoming the de facto coordinating tool for first responders, uh, law enforcement, firefighters, and it's probably gonna come to medical professionals as well in a big way. Now that still doesn't solve the radio problem, but the good news is that ICOM, Motorola, Somewhere, and Gotenna are making radios now that talk to the civilian version of ATAC. The bad news is that you don't have the civilian version of ATAC, you have the public release version of ATAC, which has disabled plugins entirely, which is how those radios talk to ATAC in the first place. Also, those radios are pretty expensive. Now, T-Rex could make a commercial radio solution work. We can get the licenses and fill out the paperwork, and we could even afford uh, at least one of these radios, for me anyway. But we're trying to build a larger, more accessible, cheaper community solution for the whole thing. Now, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't experiment with ATAC. I think everybody with Android should go and download it right now at the URL that is somewhere on the screen. And even if you're a poor iPhone user, like our unfortunate cameraman here, I would actually consider going to eBay and getting a used, beat-up Android phone just to experiment with it. It is a very unique opportunity to have a window into what is very widely used military software and see exactly what the features do. Uh, it's a little bit like having your very own F-35. Just don't be surprised if after playing with the F-35 for a while, you discover that it's not actually your favorite uh, daily driver. So let's talk about some of the alternatives. And I actually want to go back to the shop. I know it looks like we're in the absolute middle of nowhere down here, but the top of that hill is right where the T-Rex shop is. So that's where we're headed. We're going to get away from the ticks and we're going to throw some of this gear on the table and talk about it. All right, comment down below how many ticks you think we got from being in the woods for 30 minutes. All right, so alternatives to ATAC. Obviously, maps, compass still work, and you still need to watch that John Lovell video. Uh, standalone GPS units still work, and there's a bunch of other pieces of software that you can run on a phone. Uh, Sorry about the mess. 
But uh, on the phone software, you got a bunch of options that give you really important things like topo maps. Um, there's Gaia, which a bunch of the guys have been using. There's Base Map, which I've used several times myself. There's Fat Map, which actually looks the best of all of them, in my opinion. Um, but the downside with all of these pieces of software is even though they do allow you to download maps so that you can use them offline, each one has a subscription-based model where you have an account on their servers. It's not that I'm opposed to paying for software, I just don't like the idea of the phone needing to phone home occasionally when you might actually need it in an emergency uh, where there is no internet. And I'm not sure how all of these pieces of software are going to work in the future. So that brings me to my favorite piece of offline software, which is Osmond, which uses as its base vector files from the OpenStreetMap project, but you can easily add topo lines, hillshade, a whole bunch of offline options. You can have online satellite maps displayed underneath this and you can download those and use them offline. But even without the satellite imagery, you still have an awful lot of data. Buildings, points of interest, power lines, railroad tracks, river flow information, all very useful stuff. There's even offline Wikipedia articles which contain very interesting information about geographic features or businesses. There's road routing, which uh, also gives you elevation and turn data. The markup of the map is extremely basic, but uh, you can save all the GPX files and share those. Basically, Osmond lets you do everything that you could do with Google Maps and everything that you can do with paper maps. Uh, this is a very small town over here, but I have actually more information about some of the stuff down here. The swimming pool and the Thompson Park is all laid out. And uh, the other neat thing about these vector maps is the entirety of the United States at this level of detail is somewhere between five and six gigabytes, I believe. So very easy to store on your phone all the time. Now, originally when I started making this video, I was thinking primarily about rural navigation because that's where I live. But recent events have reminded me that stuff happens inside of big cities too, and it would be good to make sure that you actually can do road-based navigation uh, as well as off-road navigation. From a mapping standpoint or on the move side of the equation, Osman does almost everything that ATAC does. No 3D, but easier to use, easier to teach people how to use, and easier to set up on other people's phones. Like ATAC, you can store the program files and all the map files on a micro SD card and transfer that to other people's phones and install it and get them up and running with no internet and with no servers required. Which is good because on the communication side, Osmond is far more limited than ATAC is. There is a plugin that allows you to communicate your location using uh, the Telegram network, which is encrypted, and it lets you see all of your people on the map, wherever they are, but still requires the internet. And I am really looking for an internet-free, off-grid communication system that works. And, of course, you can still just use your radios to tell each other where you are, but there's no reason that it can't be more sophisticated than that. So on the radio video, I've had a lot of people ask if I actually expect the internet to go down. And I am not expecting it to go down in a global way, but we've already had storms that knocked out cell towers uh, here in this part of Tennessee twice this year. And it was during storms when we really wanted to communicate with people and see if they were okay. Uh, and then there is the possibility that there's a lot of um, I don't know, civil unrest going on, and every other country that's not the U.S. has uh, manipulated the communication capability of protesters in order to uh, control what they're actually capable of doing. Obviously, that would never happen in this country, uh, nor would private companies control what people are saying on the Internet in any way. But, you know, just in case, it's nice to be able to have offline communication capability. So what I have right here is some ham radio software called APRS Droid. There are a ton of ham radio software packages that run on uh, Windows and Linux, but I would like something that can be mobile while we're talking about move, shoot, and communicate. So what we're gonna do here is send our positions from one phone to the other using just audio that comes through the radio and sounds like this. 
The other phone will hear that audio through the radio and will be able to interpret it as geographical coordinates. And if I switch to the map mode, we can see uh, the, not the real GPS positions, but the fake GPS positions that I typed into these phones so that we could see where they are on a map. So APRS Droid gives me part of the communication solution that I want, and Osmond gives me all of the mapping and move solutions that I want. So what I really would like somebody to develop is a plugin that allows Osmond to see APRS packets that come in over the audio interface of a cheap Chinese radio. Now the closest thing to what I'm actually looking for is the GoTenna Pro. The GoTenna Pro is a 5 watt UHF VHF radio that does mesh networking, that does encryption, that does some very, very cool stuff. However, it's about 850 bucks for the one that works with ATAC, and it doesn't even work with the version of ATAC that I have. On the other hand, this is already a 5 watt UHF VHF radio, and I already have the phone that could technically do the mesh networking and the encryption part if the software in the phone were capable of doing it. So right now we have the opportunity to create very interesting, important tools that will allow people to do very interesting, important things. APRS Droid is open source software. Uh, it's very easy to write plugins for other stuff. So that's something that I would like to encourage some viewer out there that has the capability and the knowledge to begin working on. So if that is a project that you are interested in pursuing, uh, contact me in one of the ways that I decided to put on the screen and let me know. So in addition to sharing map location and text messages back and forth, another thing that you could add with this $20 Baofeng radio and this $20 Baofeng cable is a push to talk button that sends your voice from the Bluetooth headset through the radio and you would have voice comms with other people. So you'd hear voice communications through the earbuds and you would see packet data decrypted on the screen. Uh, that would be something that even GoTenna Pro cannot do at the moment. So I actually have three tools that I really like. I like Osmond and its ability to have a ton of map data offline in a very easy to use format that gives me incredible capability. And I like APRS Droid because even though it's a little finicky, it allows me to talk long ranges using cheap radios that I already owned with no infrastructure. And I like ATAC because even though it's a little bit difficult to work with, it has some incredible capability and it shows the power of software. ATAC in the last five years of its development has been doing things that the military has been trying to do with hardware for years and years and years before that. So action points. If you have an Android phone, download ATAC now. If you have an iPhone, consider buying a used Android phone. This one is, that's a huge long rabbit trail. I was gonna talk about how this phone is set up, but that's really unnecessary. So my recommendation to you guys is download ATAC if you're on Android, download Osmond and get maps for it so that you're prepared in an emergency, download APRS Droid and play with it uh, if you have some Baofeng radios to mess with. Technically any radio will work as long as you can figure out how to plug it into your phone. And if you are a software developer, I'd like to encourage you guys to consider building some tools that tie some of these things together so that we as a community have a little bit more access to be communicating and to be coordinating. And if you're curious, the number of ticks that we have found so far is 12, 12 ticks, but I'm sure there's more. <laughs>